Geometry Dash is well known as one of the hardest games ever created. Beyond the main levels themselves, the absurd difficulty of the hardest community made levels is simply a spectacle to witness. But for a lot of people, and especially newcomers, it is very hard to understand what exactly makes the level they're watching difficult. This can simply be due to decoration obscuring the level, and also due to some kinds of gameplay seeming easier than others. Although it's easy to see that a level is difficult, it's hard to determine how difficult it is compared to other levels. Even for top players, there are often arguments and debates surrounding which levels are placed higher than others on the demon list or challenge list. And so, in an attempt to try and objectively quantify how levels compare to each other, some members of the community look to one of the most well-known terms in speedrunning and difficult games, the frame perfect. A frame perfect is when you have a single frame to pass a timing or obstacle. The amount of time you have to do a frame perfect changes based on your frame rate, but at the typical rate of 60 FPS, you have a 16.66 millisecond window to do the timing. Seeing how short the timing window is, any obstacle that is a frame perfect obviously seems to be extremely hard. So, some people thought that you could just tally up how many frame perfects different levels have in order to rank them. The more frame perfects a level has, the more difficult it is. And this was an objective measurement too. No kind of bias could change how many frame perfects a level has. Luckily for them, a YouTuber known as Lit Tim had already made tons of videos going over how many frame perfects different levels have, even making a list of them. With the list also featuring unverified and impossible levels, people could see how hard they actually are compared to the current levels on the demon list. And before I explain why this method of measuring difficulty is extremely inaccurate, I want to emphasize that Latim is not at fault for this occurring. Yes, he made the videos and the list, but he understands himself that this should not be used for quantifying difficulty. It actually it actually takes a lot of effort to make these videos, and his work should definitely be supported. The problem at hand sprung up from the people who misinterpret the video. It's very understandable that some would want to use this data to determine level difficulty, and it seems like a good method at first glance. So, I would like to explain why this is not a good idea, and simultaneously, I will explain to you how frame perfects work, what makes them hard, and what makes the hardest levels actually difficult. Let's first break down the simplest reason. Almost all top players in the game use at least 240 FPS when playing the hardest levels, previously using 360 FPS in 2.1. With basically no one actually trying to beat the hardest levels on 60 FPS, why would you use the amount of frame perfects the level has on 60 FPS as a difficulty measurement? It is a completely different playing field and unrealistic to how levels are actually played. In response to this, some people have argued that since 240 FPS is four times more frequent than 60 FPS, a 1 frame timing on 60 FPS would turn into a 4 frame timing on 240, still making it quantifiable. This is not accurate at all. Firstly, a timing on 240 FPS can be way more lenient than 4 frames, even if it's a frame perfect on 60 FPS. Here's an example. This is a line showing how frequently inputs are checked, which is once every frame. These are called ticks. This 60 FPS player can only pass the gap when clicking on this specific tick. Let's call this correct timing the chance. Although you can make it by clicking on the chance, the 60 FPS alignment just barely doesn't make it when clicking one frame early or one frame late. Let's call these the left and right barriers. For a player on 240 FPS, there are three more ticks between the chance and the left barrier, and three more ticks between the chance and the right barrier. In total, there are seven ticks between the barriers in 240 FPS, but on 60 FPS, there's only one tick between the barriers. For this specific example, even though there's only one tick that works on 60 FPS, you can pass the gap on all seven ticks between the barriers on 240 FPS. This makes it so there's effectively seven chances on 240 FPS, which is very different to the result when simply multiplying based on frame rate, and also a lot easier. However, this can also be flipped the other way. Let's take this gap and shrink it so there's just barely enough space for the wave to fit through. Luckily for the 60 FPS player, they can still make it through thanks to the gap still aligning with the chance. In this case, on 60 FPS, the chance is practically identical to the case shown before. Before the 240 FPS player, things change drastically. Even though they have access to 6 more ticks than the 60 FPS player, none of the available ticks actually work to pass the input. The gap is now too small for them to work, so the only input that works is the same one as the 60 FPS player, the chance. Both players only have one chance to make the gap. But again, because one of them is playing on 240 FPS, the window of time they 
have to actually do the input is four times shorter, which makes the timing extremely hard. So clearly, there's a massive discrepancy between the players and how difficult the timing is for them. While the 240fps player felt a massive difference in how difficult the timings were, the 60fps player felt no difference at all. It simply feels wrong just looking at both cases. It feels obvious that this one should be way harder, but because of how alignment works, both gaps are the same difficulty for the 60fps player. This brings me on to my next point, which is that some timings are simply way harder than others. We've already seen a case of two different gaps being very far apart in difficulty despite both being a 60fps frame perfect. But even in the case of two timings being identical in how precise they are, there are many ways in which one can be harder than the other. When players use 60fps frame perfects as an objective measurement, they ignore all other aspects of what makes the timing, and the level itself, difficult in the first place. For example, decoration. Simply put, decoration can obscure the timing or make it harder to see, thus making it more difficult to actually click within the correct window. Comparing clear and obscure decoration shows how easily a timing can be made harder. Click patterns can make it harder to do a timing. If the click pattern is awkward, hard to control, or makes it so your finger is more strained than normal, passing the gap will be far more difficult than if the gap was simply on its own. A simple example of this is with spam, which makes it extremely difficult to control where you click and release. The game mode and speed heavily impacts the difficulty of the timing. Wave is where frame perfects are most commonly found due to the instantaneous reaction you get from a click or release. Ship, on the other hand, is infinitely harder when it comes to doing timings correctly. Not only is the positioning of a player before the timing usually never consistent, but there's no clear indication of when to click. Alongside all this, a lot of other miscellaneous factors can make a timing easier or harder. Things such as releases being harder to time correctly and much Muscle memory are important factors too. With all of these things having a role in how hard a timing is, it is pretty ridiculous to ignore all of them and simply lump timings into a 60fps frame perfect counter. But possibly the most important reason against this method for measuring difficulty is perhaps the simplest one. What about the rest of the level? Ranking levels this way ignores literally every other timing and obstacle in the level, and what makes it hard in the first place. A lot of top demons have around 20 to 50 60 FPS frame perfects, but I'm pretty sure there were more than 22 timings in Tartarus last time I watched it. All of these other insanely difficult sections and timings are just ignored completely in the difficulty calculation, because they don't have any frame perfects. Longer levels with easier gameplay would be seen as easy despite clearly being an immense endurance test. All of the factors behind what makes a level hard are just completely ignored when only counting frame perfects. The process of learning the level itself, the memorization required, the stamina required, and everything else is ignored. It's like trying to determine how good a car is based on how big it is. Have fun buying a truck and suffering afterwards. So, with all of these things combined, it should be clear that the rankings are inaccurate, right? Oh boy, yes they are. At first glance, all seems fine and good. Aeternus is at the top, unsurprisingly. Tidal Wave is all the way at the top with 260 FPS frame perfects, way above everything else. Okay, seems a little absurd for it to be so far above Avernus, but... Wait. Solar Flare. Above Avernus by 7 frame perfects? This is an example of how the rankings can be extremely inaccurate. Solar Flare is almost entirely wave, has pretty easy click patterns, has almost no speed changes, and the decoration barely obscures anything at all. This level is basically a breeding ground for 60fps frame perfects that are actually way easier when playing on a higher frame rate. Many of the timings are also more than 4 frames on 240fps, so it's way easier than an actual frame perfect. It's obviously pretty ridiculous that this level reigns above Avernus, Acheron, and Slaughterhouse when the general consensus is that it's not even close to the top 10. On the other hand, Eyes in the Water was absolutely demolished by these rankings, sitting at the very bottom with 10 60fps frame perfects. And yet, when you look at the demon list, you'll see it sitting just above Solar Flare, even though it has a fraction of the amount of frame perfects. Looking at the level itself, the reason's obvious. It is basically a complete opposite to Solar Flare in all factors. Many of the hard parts are ship or other game modes, the click patterns are notoriously difficult and spammy, there are a lot of speed changes later on, and much of the level is completely obscured and made harder by the decoration. So basically, if people want to use this list to rank levels, they'd have to argue that Eyes in the Water is easier than Hatred. 
which sets that number 318 on the demon list. Good luck trying to argue that. I want to make it clear again that I have no distaste towards any of the people who were doing this, especially Latim. Latim is incredibly talented at making these videos, and honestly, they are really fun to watch when not using it as a difficulty measurement. In no way should he be looked down upon or harassed for this. And for a lot of people having this mindset, they were probably just caught up in the misinformation that this was a good way to rank levels. That is why I wanted to make this video in the first place, to help them understand why it's bad. I hope you've learned a lot about the weirdness of frame perfects, what makes a level difficult, and the discrepancies between frame rates. Thank you for watching.